So is red light therapy for you? You know, you may have seen a wide range of benefits already associated with red light therapy, but maybe there's something specific that you are after and you want to know if you get a red light therapy device, is it gonna help you in that area of your life? So what we're gonna do in this video is show you exactly how you can find out, you know, if a specific benefit is one that is associated with red light therapy. What's up guys, it's Nick Kutzer here and welcome to the Mycondria YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, then this channel is all about light, circadian rhythms and how you can optimize these things in order to live your best life. If you want to make sure that you don't miss any of our future content, then make sure that you hit both the subscribe and the notification bell so that you get alerted every time we release a new video. So for today's video, we're going to be discussing how you can find out if there is a specific benefit that is associated with red light therapy. Now, there are thousands of published studies on red light therapy. And, you know, if you go to a specific uh, company, you will see that they have a list of benefits and they often do back it up with some studies. But, you know, there's such a wide range that there might be one that isn't covered in that specific, you know, information that you're looking at. And maybe there's, there's something that you want to find out uh, more about. So what I'm going to show you is I'm literally going to give you an over the shoulder view in this video of how we find, you know, studies for specific benefits in red light therapy. And then, you know, you can then replicate this and do it yourself if you can't find a study on it. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to give a quick uh, little, just what red light therapy basically is so that you know what to look out for. So by definition, red light therapy is using frequencies of light anywhere between 600 and 1000 nanometers. So you'll see different numbers in that range. You know, often it is 630 or 660. Um, 850 is another very common uh, frequency that is used in the studies. But what you uh, must just basically know is that the different frequencies, the biggest difference is usually the depth of penetration and a really high quality red light therapy device will be offering you know, multiple different wavelengths in a single device. So when you're looking at these benefits, you might see that they only used you know, one specific frequency for a specific benefit, but then a really good quality device will actually be able to give you other benefits as you might come across in the scientific research. And then lastly, just before we jump in, red light therapy also has different names. So red light therapy is the most common one, uh, but it's also known as photobiomodulation or PBM and also low level laser stimulation or LLLT. So you'll see these, these names used interchangeably, but if you're on a really good scientific uh, database, you'll find that if you use one of these keywords, then other ones, you know, they know that those words essentially mean the same thing. So studies will pop up with the other keywords too. Without further ado, let's jump into a quick example on the computer of how you can find studies for the benefit that you are after. Okay, so this is going to be one of the best websites if you want to find clinical studies on red light therapy or any other uh, topic for that matter. So it's pubmed.gov. Um, and this is basically a database where they collect all the studies that have been published in scientific journals. So literally as simple as, as this is going to seem, you head over to the search tab and you type in red light therapy and, and let's do muscle fatigue. That's one we didn't discuss earlier. And what I'm going to suggest you do is you're going to get a whole bunch of results over here. But what you want to do is actually filter for um, some clinical trials. So that's actually where they've done some kind of an intervention. So if you click uh, clinical trials down there, then what you're going to find is actually, you know, it's not going to be a summary or something like that. It's actually going to be a specific trial. Um, so this first one over here, red, um, 660 nanometers and infrared, 830 nanometers, low level laser therapy in skeletal muscle fatigue in humans. What is better? <clears throat> so this will actually be an interesting one because now they're going to compare different wavelengths. You know, if you've got a high quality device, then you'll actually be having both red and infrared light in one device. But um, once you click that, what you're going to find is you probably won't get access to the full study. Some of them will, but some of them will ask you to pay for it. What you will get for free, though, is the abstract. So let's quickly just cover what is in the abstract of this study over here. So as they say in animal and clinical trials, LLLT using red and infrared has been shown to delay the development of skeletal muscle fatigue. However, the parameters employed in these studies do not allow a conclusion as to which uh, wavelength range is better in delaying the development of skeletal muscle fatigue. So already by this point, we can already gather that they're going to say, yes, there are benefits. But it's going to be interesting to see you know, what kind of results they got when comparing um, the red and the infrared. 
Um, so with this in mind, we compared the effects of red and infrared on skeletal muscle fatigue. They did a randomized double blind placebo con uh, controlled crossover trial. It's a very high quality study. Basically, it means you know there's a placebo group, so you can see whether um, you know people just believe something is good for them. You have to have one of these groups to make sure that you know it's not just in someone's head that they all of a sudden um, you know have uh, let's say faster muscle recovery because really you know the power of your mind is a real factor um, so you don't want to you know because we're shining a light on people you want to have a control group that doesn't actually get the real treatment but doesn't know that that didn't happen um, <clears throat> and what they found so we had people treated with red we had treat pe people treated with infrared um, and then don't worry too much about the doses that's not something you necessarily need to look at um, for the the purpose of this um, and then this is, they'll tell you exactly what they did. So they had four points on the biceps uh, for three minutes before exercise. So here are the results. The main peak force was significantly higher following red and infrared light. So you can see 12% uh, percent higher for the red group, 14% higher uh, for the infrared group, um, and, then, and that's compared to the placebo group. And the mean average force was significantly higher, also following red, so that's 13% infrared, 13% than the placebo group. There were no significant differences in the uh, average force or the peak force between the red and infrared light. And this is the most important part here at the end here. We conclude that both red and infrared LLLT are effective in delaying the development skeletal muscle fatigue and an enhancement of skeletal muscle performance. Further studies would be needed in order to identify the specific me mechanisms. So in the study, they've basically tried to see, you know, which was better between red and infrared, and they found that both of them had a benefit. Obviously, you can read this now and go, okay, well, the best um, answer now would be to get a device that gives you both red and infrared light. Okay, so now that you know how to find a study for the specific benefit that you're trying to get from red light therapy, I think it's really important that we quickly touch on the fact that, you know, some of the devices that are sold as home devices, they aren't necessarily going to be the same quality as what you'll find in the scientific studies. So if you want to make sure that you're getting a device that is really going to get you the results that you're after, then I highly suggest that you look at the mitochondria devices. They're extremely high powered and they use the frequencies of light that are most commonly found in the scientific studies. They also are flicker free, which means you're not going to get any negative side effects from a flickering light. And they also emit zero electromagnetic fields at their treatment distance. So if you want to make sure that you really tap into the best benefits that you're seeing in the scientific uh, literature, make sure you head over to mitochondria.com. Otherwise, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. And other than that, I hope that you have a fantastic day further, and we will chat again soon. Cheers.